There's a lot of different fields that need to measure pressures. And as a result, as each of them evolved, a number of different ways of measuring pressure units have evolved as well. And so we need to be able to convert between these different units because what we're about to see is that the SI unit isn't necessarily the one that we're used to thinking in. And certainly not the one that most other fields are working in either. So let's take a look at some of these units so we can do our conversion factors between them. Now, the Pascal is going to be our SI unit. And it's small enough that we often talk about kilopascals because that actually matches up better to atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure is typically going to be around 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. And in kilopascals, that'll be 101 pascal, uh, kilopascals. Notice that that kind of means that if you just look at the number for kilopascal, that'll give you some quick knee-jerk idea of what percentage of our normal atmospheric pressure you're at. If you're at 80 kilopascal, you're at about 80% of normal atmospheric pressure. If you're 110, that'd be a really high pressure system, uh, and that would be 10% higher than our typical atmospheric pressure. So it's a useful number, and it gives us a nice intuitive notion of where we're at, and we're typically going to see that being used in physics and chemistry. But that said, we're going to see other units of pressure in both fields very often as well. Now, the atmosphere tends to be our flagship unit that we see in almost every field. Uh, and typical atmospheric pressure is going to be one atmosphere. And that's going to be an exact quantity for these conversion factors. Now, we certainly know, just by turning on the Weather Channel or the news or whatever, that atmospheric pressure does vary a decent amount. And you know how you know that? They talk about high pressure and low pressure systems moving around on the planet. So we know built in right there there's areas that are higher pressure and areas that are lower pressure sitting around every day in our environment. And the reasons for that are outside of the scope of what we're going to do in chemistry. But I do want to point out that though one atmosphere is an exact number for the conversions to all of these other units we're going to look at here, keep in mind that the atmospheric pressure is often going to deviate from one atmosphere. Now that's the most commonly used, uh, at least I think it's about the most commonly used unit that we have in chemistry. We'll find that it's common in other fields too, and there are other common units in chemistry. So we've got to be good at doing our conversion factors here. Next up, we've got the bar. And the bar is a modification of Pascal's. And it's comparable in terms of some of the assumptions to atmospheres, and we'll talk about that separately in just a moment. So one bar is going to equal 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. So you can see all that we've done here is move over the kilopascal decimal two more places so that it's a nice mm, comparable unit. One atmosphere is about one bar. There's a small deviation that we see right here, but it's about one bar. And that's going to be commonly used in meteorology, chemistry again, and also in physics. So this is just tweaking things into a useful modification of Pascal, much like we did with meters and the angstrom. An angstrom was about the size of an atom. And yeah, it's 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. We could keep on talking about it with the, you know, uh, with the exponent, but it was just easier to describe as the angstrom. Same thing with atmospheric pressure. We'll commonly use bars. Now, millimeters of mercury, uh, it has its origin in the way that we built some of our early barometers. It was actually a column of mercury sitting in a basically a big inverted test tube. And you can get it to sit about 760 millimeters high over a pool of mercury, with a little vacuum sitting there over top of it, holding it up. Now, that means we could also do a conversion and have this be in centimeters of mercury. And if it's in centimeters of mercury, then it'd be 76 centimeters of mercury. And you'll see that on some of the older barometers that are around as well. But that's just something as an extra aside. Now, this is an exact conversion to one atmosphere. They, it's just a definition at this point. Um, that said, we're going to have to use sig figs if we come to bar or pascal or kilopascal. And once again, we'll see millimeters of mercury used commonly in chemistry, but you'll also see it a lot in the biological sciences, including medicine. So almost all of the time that you're talking about pressures in medicine, we're talking millimeters of mercury. Now, tor is going to be a modification of millimeters of mercury. It's going to be the same size. The thing is, we know that 
liquids can compact or expand a little bit under dramatically different pressures. We also know that density changes with temperature. And so we said, you know, that's not too bad having millimeters of mercury, but let's actually take out the mercury part of it to get rid of the temperature dependence and the pressure dependence. And we'll call this new magic unit the TOR. Now TOR gets used a heck of a lot in chemistry. You'll also see that when in biology. I've also noticed that you tend to talk about TOR quite a bit when you're doing things like uh, flights and flight planning. So if you ever want to be a pilot or do anything involved in aeronautics, you're probably going to run across TOR as well. Now, one that we see in our kind of everyday lives as we fill up the tires on our car is the PSI. And PSA is pounds per square inch. So we can abbreviate it as PSI, which is how we usually see it. But more rigorously, we would write it as pounds divided by inches squared. And we can see right away how we would do that in a conversion factor problem. 14.7 pounds per square inch is our atmospheric pressure. Now, when you're measuring with a tire gauge, you're looking at the difference in pressure between the inside and outside. Uh, so if you're supposed to fill your tire up to 30 pounds, or 30 PSI, in an absolute sense, if we were to take it out into a vacuum, it would actually be 40, uh, sorry, yeah, 44.7 pounds per square inch. That's not a critical thing. I just wanted to mention it. That's going to be something we see more in engineering and throughout American society whenever we're working with engineered materials. Now, any of these ones with the asterisk is an exact quantity. In a calculations, we have as many sig figs as we want. Everything else you see here actually does have some sort of a definition to it. And that means it does have significant figures. So if I were going from 760 millimeters of mercury into 14.7 pounds per square inch, that would end up having three sig figs because this has three, and this has an infinite number. That's what our pressure units are going to look like. Don't worry about memorizing them. You'll have them on tables, on exams, and uh, in your textbooks and things. But you want to be very good at doing the conversions between them.